Skeeter Owners Tournament. Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome. What's up, everybody? Thank you for clicking on the video. As you can see, we're kicking this one off with a little bit of change of pace. Back here in the office today, having to make some slight adjustments to keep the content rolling, as we often do here summertime in Texas, because it's about 876 degrees out in the garage. So I brought the cameras inside. We're back here in the office. This is actually where I run the merch store, theheaterzone.com, where I pack up and ship out any of the hats or t-shirts or merch orders that you guys place one-man army style around here. It's all done by me. From right here within this little office so we're shooting in here today we're going to talk about the skeeter owners tournament i'm gonna give you guys a breakdown of the trip show you guys some footage from the trip obviously i'm back home now so i've been going through all the footage that i shot during the tournament and as i was reviewing everything it became apparent to me that this was going to need to be a little bit of a different style video so that one i could explain some things give you guys some insight as to what was going on this whole time and also explain to you why there really isn't too much content from this tournament couple things first off skeeter owners tournament had a blast i do not regret going the first two days in east texas were awesome hanging out with captain ron running around on lake fork and then the tournament started and not only was it a little bit of a high stress situation you know people cursing at the boat ramp getting upset boats almost hitting other boats boats almost backing into me Oh, was this close? Anyways, some chaos at the ramp. I didn't even film any of that. I was just trying to get my boat launched and out of the way. But once we got out onto the water, I did kick the cameras on and start talking to you guys. And then I was reviewing that footage and realizing that it was still dark outside. And the camera that I was using to shoot this stuff, the new GoPro Hero 10 that I was testing out in some low light conditions, the footage just looked terrible. It did not turn out. It's not usable, at least not for me in one of my videos. It would not be enjoyable for you guys to watch. That's why we're kind of doing this a little bit different. I am gonna let you guys see some footage from the tournament. I'll show you guys what happened. We did have some success and we did catch fish. Speaking of catching fish and weighing in fish, a little bit easier said than done. So Lake Fork is a slot limit lake. And what that means is, you're only allowed to legally keep and weigh in fish that are either under 16 inches or over 24 inches. So any fish in that 16 to 24 inch range off limits, you can't weigh one of those in. You can't even keep those. Those have to go right back in the water. So it made it a little bit more challenging. I wasn't ever even aware of a slot limit. This is all new info to me, as you guys know. We're on a learning adventure over here on this channel. And this was something that I had to wrap my head around. I was like, wait a minute. So you're telling me if I catch a fish and it's over 16 inches, no go? Like, yeah, it has to be 24 if it's over 16. So really, you're catching smaller fish in that one and a half to two and a half pound range, or you're catching a monstro. Like you saw Captain Ron catch in that first video, that nine and a half pounder, that was an over, as they say, over 24 inches. Most of the fish weighed in are unders. Now, something interesting, fun fact that Dave told me while we were out there waiting for lines in on day one of the tournament, he told me that the winning bass for the past two years of the Skeeter Owners Tournament was caught on the first day during the first hour of the tournament. I don't believe that was the case this year, but those winning fish from years past were overs and again, and over won it this year. I think it was like an 11 pounds and it was actually a customer, a Captain Ron. So shout out to the dude that ended up winning the tournament. Spoiler alert, I didn't win a new boat. We're gonna talk about all that in this video. I wanted to give you guys a breakdown of the slot limit, tell you guys a little bit about why you're seeing me back here in the office instead of out there in the garage or out on a boat. But we are gonna go fishing in this video. Don't worry, the name of the game around here is always fishing or fishing related content. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys see what happened on day one. I'm going to forego using any footage that didn't look good to me. Anything that was grainy, shot in the dark, over or under exposed, or if the color was off, I'm scrapping it. I just can't bring myself to use it. I tried. It is what it is. We're gonna do this video a little bit different. I'm gonna share a few moments from the Skeeter Owners Tournament with you guys, and then we'll come back here and we'll wrap this bad boy up from the office. Thank you guys so much for coming back and tuning in for another video. Let's check out some of this footage from the Skeeter Owners Tournament on day one. It was a grinder, 36 boats on this one spot. Crazy.
All right, dudes, tournament update. Been fishing for 26 minutes. I've had two little bites on the ridge worm and the jig. I think I had one smack at the square bill too, but we're halfway through the first hour, which means we've got about 30 minutes left. <laughs> According to Dave. Yeah, me too. Two little, I, I had two hit the ridge worm and one hit the uh, jig, but, and uh, I had one slap at the crankbait, the square bill early, early when I was burning it up shallow. But that was it, dude. Let one go hit that other, that, that creek up that way. Say what? The ones that caught that big one, that red and white boat. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. They're all they're all over here on this hump. Isn't this where you caught your five? Yeah. That's what I was saying. They're all around this hump. The big ones are. Boom, boom. First cast, bro. Ooh, oh boy, I was while well, I was talking to him over here because they're like, you don't mind if we like tub. I was like, nah, dude, get after it. And then he hooked into something over there. I was like, oh, yeah, dude. And he's like, ah, oh, cat. Yeah, I heard him say kitty like, cat. I heard him say oh, kitty cat. Yeah. And then he rolled back out and caught that other one. He rolled by here. He made sure. He's like, dude, that's the biggest bass I've ever caught in my life, dude. He goes, it's a little over 24 inches. I'm like, dude, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, everybody it's, I talked to, like, dude, you just got to wave him out. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. Yeah. I feel like running around. back and forth. I feel like running them. Running I know. Running around isn't really gonna. It's not gonna do. Anything. What are you gonna do? Go to the next spot that has 36 boats on right. it? Yeah, that's all you can do. I was like, I'm gonna count real quick, and I got to 30 like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dang, there are so many of us in yeah. here, and they hear all this pinging and all this. That dude was so excited. He made sure he came out of his way to come by. Yeah, I saw him come over here and talk to you. It. Yeah, I should have retied one fish sooner. It was a slot. It was a slot fish. All right, so as you guys can see here in this clip, that boat saw me hook into that fish and immediately went straight over and started casting to the same spot that I was fishing. That seemed to be the strategy for a lot of the people out there during the tournament. It was boats on top of boats on top of boats. And if you're an angler, if you're a bass fisherman who hits the water with any sort of frequency, you totally understand how frustrating that can be. So yeah. Uh, it is what it is. This is this is what it was for that whole tournament. You guys are seeing now a little bit of insight into why uh, you know I'm saying the things that I'm saying in this video. All right, guys. Boats everywhere. Anglers everywhere. I just had a good fish jump off right at the boat on the square bill. The Magnum, the SB Mini Mag square bill. So you know what that means, man. Throw this thing for the rest of the dang day. The rest of the dang day. All I need is one on this thing. Come on, bruh. I got broke off, told you that. Had once crushed the mini mag. He was either a barely under or a slot. Shallow? Yeah, grinding. 
Less than eight feet of water. Mm. Grinding bottom, dude. Smoked it. I saw him rolling on shad on a little hump over there, and I just bebopped up shallow. Mm. Fired up in there with a square bill. Go, 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 go. Spit it right at the boat. Good times. Let me grab a piece of that jerky off of you, bro. Left my jerky in my cooler yesterday, and when I opened it this morning, it was full of jerky water. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Sweet heat. That's the best one. I feel like if, if this wasn't going on, you could probably come up in his arm and hammer on him. But. Dude, when I came in here yesterday, there were, no, there were like three boats in here. Yeah, like one more. That was it. I was going to come check out the corner and sure enough, there's three boats on it. So. Yeah, so I don't know, man. one in the book so I'll give you guys a brief little rundown while I'm headed up here to the truck we didn't do so hot my goal for this tournament is to just weigh in one fish that's what I'm trying to do I got two good bites all day first one broke me off second one shook the square bill right at the boat no fish no scoreable fish no fish period what she goes boys this is not easy this whole bass fishing thing isn't easy. You just get live scope. It's basically cheating. Hey, just get live scope, man. It makes it, it makes it real easy. You can see the fish. can see we're back at the lodge sorry to disappoint but neither myself nor dave were able to catch a scoreable fish today day one was tough there were 36 boats on that one spot that we were fishing crazy we're gonna pick it up at day two i'm sorry that we didn't put any fish in the boat today so way she goes boys we're out here doing this i wish there was more to show you but it was a long hot grinder of a day and uh yeah it was just it was just tough for myself and Dave and for everybody else that we talked to but there were some people that caught some dragons and the leading fish isn't over so there were several fish that were weighed in over 24 inches my mission for this entire tournament is just to weigh in one fish whether it's an under preferably an over I just want to weigh in a fish but man I'm whipped I've been up since 245 blowing and going gripping and ripping and your boy's tired so I'm gonna grab a shower get some rest and we're gonna pick this video up tomorrow day two hopefully we can just weigh in that one bass I keep saying hopefully we're gonna we're gonna weigh in one bass tomorrow at least see if we can recoup some of this gas money but any cast out here could be the one potential share lunker so we just got to keep grinding keep our head in the game I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so that was day one. I got broke off on a T-rig, solid bite, hammered the bait, cracked the hook set, snapped me. I don't know if she was on the other side of a tree, but it did not take much. That line, clean break, she gone. Second fish, I'm pushing up into an area that has 36 boats on it, literally. We're in one little cove. I count around, I pan around, I get to 36 before I stop counting. There's boats everywhere. You got to share the holes. That's just the name of the game in the owner's tournament. You're casting 
practically to the same freaking waypoint as other people a lot of the times, man. It was tough. It was crowded. It was pressured. The second fish, I fired the six cents mini mag 3.8 square bill up into the shallows around this little chunk of brush. And I was burning it back to the boat and it got smacked by what I feel like was either a shorter slot fish or maybe potentially an under. If this fish was under 16 inches, it was a good under and one that I am confident that I would have been able to weigh in. But as you saw in the footage, that sucker spit that crankbait right before I got her to the boat. And I never got to find out whether that fish was a 16 or a slot. Pretty confident saying it was a slot fish, but you can't weigh them or measure them in the water. So that was my experience on day one. Two good bites and that was it missed opportunities it's all good we have another day right day one of the tournament all day event six to three something like that day two is a half day so we have from six to noon on day two the pressure was on i had to go out there and put a fish in the boat can i do it let's find out good morning good morning here we are we're out here day two skeeter owners 2022 we just uh launched and made our first run to our first spot and uh about to pull up in here now hopefully get on an early bite see if we can make something happen out here me and the mangler on the last day i just want to weigh in a fish man i'll be stoked if i weigh in a fish but that is easier said than done out here we got some company but we'll see if we can make it happen man pulling up to the first spot now man i'll see you guys up at the front when the sun comes up we got lines in 6 a.m all right we got about five minutes till lines in say a little prayer throw up some good mojo and wish your boy luck before we get off into the rest of this video, man. Like I said, I'm just looking for one, man. Redemption. Keep myself from looking like a fool out here. Either way, we had a blast with Captain Ron. But, man, I sure would love to catch a fish in this tournament. What do you guys say? The struggle is real. Lake Fork is a beast, dudes. It's a beast. And it's even more challenging when there's 87 boats on every single hole on the lake. But... No complaints, man. We out here. We're fishing. It's a beautiful morning. Good luck, gentlemen. If you were ever thinking, you know, I wonder if I should turn my my radio up real loud right now so everybody can hear it. No, the answer is no. Don't do that. Nice slot. 
Not bad. At least we caught a fish. That was fun. Shaking a little bit. Fish felt big, I wasn't sure. Hey, got one to the boat though. That'll wake you up. Okay, here we are on the road, headed home after the owner's tournament. I wanted to chop it up with you guys for a minute here on camera, give you guys a quick recap. The owner's tournament itself was tough. There was a million boats, and there was 30 boats on every single spot. Um, not typically the way I enjoy to get out and fish. I'm trying to get out there into nature and be by myself most of the time, but the Skeeter owner's tournament, really cool event something cool to be a part of if you are a skeeter boat owner and something that everybody should go do at least once if you got a skeeter i think it's cool to go up there see all the stuff you get some some cool stuff they give to you you know i got a little bag full of gifts really you buy them you pay 120 dollars to fish the tournament so really you buy the bag of gifts but for that 120 bucks you got potential win a boat I had a brand new fx20 i think it was fxr20 anyways yeah, we didn't win a boat. We didn't even weigh in a freaking fish. I suck! Gosh! It is what it is, man. I have fun, and I learned a lot about Lake Fork. That lake is not as easy as it used to be, or at least so I hear, you know. Several of the old schoolers tell me, we used to come out here and da-da-da-da-da, telling you about how good it used to be. Well, for me and Dave, Lake Fork was fishing tough, but I was able to get out there with the legendary Captain Ron himself. And, and fish a little bit and get on some, some nice Lake Fork tanks. And he caught a nine and a half right in front of me. That could have been me. Now, any cast, that could have been me, man. We were right there in the mix when, uh, when Ron stuck that nine and a half. So that was cool to be there for that. Shout out to the Mangler for making the whole thing possible, pushing me out of my comfort zone and encouraging me to get out here for the owner's tournament. I enjoyed it, brother. I know you're watching. I appreciate all the arrangements you made, everything you did for us on this trip, man, made it just that much smoother, man. When you got you got a partner with you, you got a couple buddies that help, you know, you got somebody help back the truck down, help grab a bag of ice. When you got just a buddy there, it makes things better, man. And me and Dave, have uh you know we're building the bond man me and the mangler becoming fast friends so it's it's cool to get out there on a little adventure and confirm what i already knew you know was that we get along great and i'm looking forward to getting back out on another road trip with dave soon hopefully you know go crack them maybe go back to fork and crack them i love being in east texas man i i don't really want to leave but i want to go home and see my dogs and my wife if that makes sense like i don't care about leaving east texas and going back to austin i just want to see my dogs and my wife but i would love to like just stay here for like a month because this is like home to me man this feels like home everywhere i go the roads feel normal traffic feels normal the lanes are like wider here down in austin the traffic lanes they, they're like super narrow they're for like the prius or the little uh, toyota electronic cars the toyotas Toyota Musk. Something about those lanes in Austin. It's just not it's just not where it's at, man. But out here in East Texas, dude, you got freaking wide open spaces, wide open highways, big fish, good food, southern hospitality, good people, family, friends. I love being up here in Northeast Texas, man. I can't wait to come back. Shout outs to all the homies from back home, man. I miss everybody. And yeah, maybe next time we'll come and stay a little bit longer. And I'll tell you this, next time there won't be no dang massive 600 boat tournament going on. I'm gonna go back when there's nobody on the lake and try to get my redemption. Catch me a double digit out there on Lake Fork. But anyways, man, I gotta hit the road, get home to my wife, my dogs. Got about a four hour drive ahead of me, man. But we're on the road, on the road again. Another adventure is drawing to a close. Hope you guys enjoyed the series. Hope you guys enjoyed riding along. I'll see y'all back at the house. All right, and there that was, guys. That's gonna wrap up the footage from the Skeeter owners this year. I had a good time. It was a fun event, something that I'm slowly coming to realize, guys, and please don't be upset with me. If you're a tournament angler, nothing against tournament angling. I, many of my friends, many of my people that I have on my phone that I, that I text on like a one-to-one -one basis 
are professional anglers. They're my friends, you know, I have nothing against tournament fishing, but for me personally, I just don't think it's for me right now. I enjoy going out onto the lake solo. I like to get out into nature and be alone. Fishing has not ever really been a social activity for me, if that makes sense. I'm used to going it alone or with maybe one or two friends here and there, you know, not 600. <laughs> and it was just super difficult to find a spot that could potentially hold fish where there weren't already 15 boats sitting. So that can be slightly frustrating when you're out there on the water. I didn't let it ruin my good time. I still had a blast. I knew the name of the game going in. Everybody gave me a heads up. They're like, dude, it's a total S show. There are boats everywhere. You're gonna be casting at the same stump as the dude next to you. And I knew all that going into it. I weighed the pros versus the cons and I made the decision to make the trip so that I could go experience it for myself, see what it was all about. And now I know, you know, the Skeeter Owners Tournament, it's probably not for me. If you're a Skeeter boat owner and it looks interesting to you, if the event looks fun, I think it is worth traveling up there and experiencing the event for a couple reasons. The maintenance tents there. I was able to pull my boat up and Skeeter just went through it and fixed all the little odds and ends, things that were going on. They, they, they fixed my live well. They went through my boat and buttoned everything up. We're here at the service booth, the Skeeter Owners Tournament. Got Junebug here with me. Got a couple minor things we're gonna get fixed. I'll show them to you here. Everybody's here just getting their boats worked on. They got the service tent here. Service technicians from every company, Skeeter, Yamaha, Power Pole, Humminbird, Minn Kota, anything you need to get looked at, they can look at it here for you. Like I said, there's a couple small things we're gonna get fixed up on Junebug. There's thunder, thunder rumbling in the background. I don't know if we're about to get rained on or what, but thought I'd show you guys around. Dave's over here hollering at our new friend Bill. We're just standing around talking boats, chatting and stuff. And uh, yeah, something happened. Um, my live well thing came loose. So I, anyways, I can't open and close my live wells. That little thing, little piece of hardware fell off. It's happened once before I fixed it myself. This time the screw fell out and I can't find it. So I'm gonna see if they can help me. We'll get it fixed either way. And then there's one other little super minor, nothing major going on with Junebug anyways. We're gonna keep the cameras rolling. I'll show you guys around the tent. Hopefully it doesn't rain on us, man. This, this is looking sketchy. So apparently I'm not the only one here with the live well issue. Dude in front of me is having the exact same thing fixed on his boat. So I'm hoping that this rain misses us, man. I don't have my cover. It's always something. In the booth, we're gonna get the live well fixed up for us. We'll be good to go. And the even better news is that the rain missed us. We're still dry. Good to go. They had every single company there, as you guys saw, you know, everybody was there. If you needed something done to your Skeeter boat, your Yamaha motor, your Minn Kota products, your Humminbird products, they were all right there. Power pole, they were all right there on site. And they made it really easy for you to go and troubleshoot issues and get stuff taken care of. That's one of the main reasons to go to the Skeeter owners tournament is to go roll your stuff through that service tent and be like, hey, that's loose, that's broken. Can I get this stuff fixed? No questions asked. They just hook you up and fix it. It's pretty awesome, man, within their ability. Obviously, you know, some stuff they probably don't have the capabilities to do there, but they had the capabilities to do a lot. Let me tell you, those trucks were stocked. They had parts on hand and they were rolling boats in and out, hooking everybody up that needed help. It was awesome to see. It was one of the coolest parts of the whole event for me, being able to roll my boat through there and be like, hey, this is broke. And they'll be like, no problem, fix it. So the service tent, that's one really good reason to go. Also, the event itself is really well organized. A lot of energy, a lot of power and money goes into this thing. It's like a big old three ring circus, fishing stuff everywhere, booths, tents, products, companies. It's fun just to go up there and walk around. As far as the actual fishing during the tournament goes, that was for the birds, man. Catch me on the lake solo. I will not be doing that again. But anyways, man, that's my take on the Skeeter Owners Tournament. That was my experience. The Sixth Sense Ridge Worm and the Sixth Sense C20 Crankbait were without a doubt the killers on this trip. They put the biggest fish in the boat on Lake Fork. But as you saw there on day two, I was only able to get that one slot fish into the boat on the crew. No go, not legal. Got to put that one right back in the water and keep fishing and hope to get either an under 
or an over. Unfortunately, your boy was unable to weigh in a fish. But like I said, I had fun, I enjoyed myself, and I'm looking forward to getting back up to East Texas when the Skeeter Owners Tournament is not going on so that I can bebop around Lake Fork and maybe get some redemption out there by myself or maybe link up with my buddy Captain Ron and have him go put me on a dragon. That's always fun. Shout outs to Captain Ron and the Mangler for making my trip what it was, man. Without you guys, I don't feel like I would have had as much fun. And without you guys, this channel and everything that I do would be absolutely nothing. Now, as always, if you guys are interested in checking out any of those baits that you saw me using out there, or if you want to learn more about my signature series of fishing rods, the Heater Series, check out SixthSenseFishing.com and use my code JR10 at checkout. That's going to give you 10% off everything that you order off the website. Everyone who places an order with my JR10 code gets a personalized shout out on my Instagram account. So DM me a screenshot of your order confirmation and I will post you up, tag you up. It's just a way for me to say thank you and give you all some public recognition for helping us keep this whole thing running without you the lights and the cameras do not roll so thank you much love also shout outs to the heater army if you guys want to learn more about the heater army if you would like to get access to some special perks cool emojis and badges for here on the channel and access to some raw and uncut fishing footage that is only available to heater army members click that top link down below in the video description you guys are all amazing the JR-10 Army, the Heater Army, and anyone who sits down and watches one of my videos, much love to you all. If you're not already subscribed to this channel and you're watching this video, go ahead, click that button. Help us grow this beast. We are ripping our way to 50K, and I can't wait to hit that milestone. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this one, man. That about does it. That about wraps her on up. So I'm going to say goodbye for now, but I'll see you on the next one. You